Hi, it's Rebecca. What has happened in September and October? I kept meaning to do a September wrap up and then October just went absolutely crazy with uni assignments. So I thought I'll just combine the two and we'll just do quick and fast. You only want to know if I like the books anyway, right? You want to know what they're about and if I like them. So here we go. I read 17 books in September. Seven of those were uni books. So I'm not going to include them unless I absolutely loved them and that was only two of them. I read one audiobook and I had six books from the library. I thought I'd start off with my Schwab Timber books. I took part in a readathon, which was just catching up on Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab's books. So I read four in the first two weeks of September. It's Edda and Becca here. It's called Schwab Timber because it takes place in the whole month of September, not the first two weeks. First of all, we had this Savage song, which is kind of like Romeo and Juliet, except it's a lot more political and there's monsters that are created out of human acts of violence so I give it three stars I thought it was good I did like it but there was a lot of world building in the beginning it was quite info dumpy and it felt like it didn't know what it wanted to be whether it wanted to be an action adventure story whether it wanted to be a political thriller almost yeah so three stars it was okay wouldn't read it again i'm actually gonna give it away so if anyone wants a copy let me know then i read tunnel of bones which is the second in the city of ghost series and this is a middle grade ghost busting awesome adventure the first one takes place in edinburgh and that's about a girl called cassidy blake whose parents are ghost hunters um, so they travel around the world trying to find ghosts, looking into the history of cities and places. But Cassidy actually can see ghosts and has a ghostly best friend. So the first one takes place in Edinburgh, the second one takes place in Paris. And I loved it. It was so easy to slip back into it. It was haunting. It was eerie. Victoria has this amazing way of creating worlds that feel so real to you. And I pretty much read it in a day. It was great. So I gave that four stars. The third book I read was The Unbound, which is the second and last book in the Archive duology. This series is about a girl called Mackenzie who works for the Archive. Now the Archive is a place where the dead rest on shelves like books and they can wake up and become a history. And that is basically what we see as ghosts. So it's another ghosty one, but this one is fantastic. It was so good. It was gripping. I kept turning the pages. It looks a lot at PTSD and mental health in a really respectful way. And it unpacks a lot of the myths of what therapy is and how we can move on in our lives. And it was just absolutely brilliant. I loved it. I gave it five stars. And then the last thing I read for Shrubtember was the first volume of the Shades of Magic series, which is based off of her adult fantasy series, The Darker Shade of Magic. This is a prequel graphic novel. I think the first two volumes are out just now, but you can get each individual comic online. I did really like it. I wasn't keen on the art style so much. It's quite dark. Um... But the story is interesting, so that's why I read it was for the story. I knew I didn't like the art style, but I could move past it. So I gave this three stars as well. The next book I read was Once by Anna Carey. <sighs> this is the second book in the Eve series, which takes place in a dystopian world where girls are sent to boarding schools and when they graduate, they're actually sent to become concubines, I suppose. I'm recording a video! This one was really disappointing. I thoroughly enjoyed Eve. I thought it was fantastic, but it just felt really flat. The world was boring. Like it didn't have any of the tension that it had in the first book. And it actually got a bit kind of cheesy in places. And then it falls into that trope of like, oh, the worst thing that can happen to a 16 year old girl is that she gets married off to an old dude. And it's like, I don't want to read about that. The next book I read is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. This is a story about a couple who've been married for 15 years and then they start to get bored in their marriage and decide to start murdering people. It takes place a year after that decision is made and bodies have now started being discovered by the police. Although it was a really easy read, I did have quite a few problems with the book itself. First of all, the husband doesn't have a backbone and he just goes along with whatever his wife is saying. And most importantly, he doesn't tell his wife really important things about their kids, which I would have thought as parents, you should do at a minimum. There are a few continuity errors. There was a really negative representation of therapy. And the big twist felt hollow because I felt like nothing really matched up. 
because of those continuity errors. And then at the end, the resolution was just a bit too easy for me. So yeah, I wasn't overly impressed. It was three stars because the chapters did end on cliffhangers. So it was really easy to read, but for the actual content within those pages, it was okay, but it could have been better. The first of the two uni books I'm gonna talk about is Cold Tom by Sally Prue. This is a retelling of a folk story called Tamlin, and this is about a boy called Tom who is part of the fairy tribe and demons are starting to encroach on their territory. Tom has a few issues within the fairy tribe itself. He feels really out of place and that nobody really cares about him. So he actually runs away into the demon city. But what happens is we realize that the demons are actually humans and it's really flipped the whole villain aspect on its head because who really are the villains in this story? What constitutes a family? I just absolutely loved it. It was so good. So I gave it four stars. Really good. Really enjoyed it. And it's a quick read as well. I then picked up a graphic novel which is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me and this is written by Marie Kotamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This is a graphic novel about a girl called Freddie who's in a really bad relationship with someone called Laura Dean. It's a very toxic relationship. Freddie is constantly second guessing herself and Laura Dean is just a bit of a cow. The art style was confusing in places because it does blend in quite a bit sometimes and I don't really like the colour palette which is black and white with splodges of pink but I did really enjoy how it looks at toxic relationships and knowing your own worth and what you'll stand for. It was brilliant, it's diverse, it's got LGBT rep and it also looks at teen pregnancy. It's extremely relatable because many of us have had that one person that we just can't stay away from and unfortunately Laura Dean knows that and she uses it to her advantage. Now we get into all the five star books. So first of all, it's the second of my uni books that I read this month and that is Girl Meets Boy by Ali Smith. I cannot put into words how much I loved this book. This is actually a retelling of the myth of Iphis and it's a gender flipped version of that. So it looks at gender and what it means to be a woman, what it means to be a man and also what it means to be a woman in a man's world. And this book has it all. We've got characters who have forced themselves into boxes that society says that they should be in and we've got people who don't care and do what the hell they like and it was so refreshing I loved it it's a short read again and this is one of my new favorite books I would highly encourage everybody to pick up a copy of Girl Meets Boy by Ali Smith it was brilliant then I read Dear Evan Hansen which is the script book of a musical which I absolutely love if you know me you know I love Dear Evan Hansen this is a story about a boy called Evan who deals with anxiety and he writes letters to himself to kind of pep himself up and say, you're doing a good job, you're doing the best you can, just keep going. Um, one day a boy in his school picks up one of his letters that he's written to himself and thinks that he's taken the mick out of him. Um, and then that boy is later discovered as having taken his life. So this is the aftermath of that. And Evan finds himself in a difficult position because the boy's family think that based on what the letter says, Evan is the boy's best friend. And Evan deals with a lot of social isolation. So he kind of latches onto this and the lie just spirals out of control. It's absolutely brilliant. The music is in there as well. So you can actually read along with the lyrics. I read it and listened to it at the same time and I was bawling my eyes out. So yeah, five stars, brilliant. I think this should be required reading in all schools everywhere because it was just that good. Then I read two more graphic novels. So the first of those is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Osman. I actually picked this up for my cousin because I thought she would enjoy it. Um, she's a reluctant reader, but she flew through these pages and I just knew I had to pick up a copy as well. So this is about two boys called Nick and Charlie who have gone to the same school for a long time, but they've never actually spoken to each other. And then one day the registration tables are all mixed up and Nick and Charlie find themselves sitting beside each other. And then they start to fall in love and it's so sweet. I absolutely adored it. So yeah, I gave this five stars. The next book I read was volume two of Heartstopper. This one follows on straight away from the events of the first book, which deals more with your sexual identity and finding your place in the world. Whereas this one is 
finding what you're comfortable with and what you're looking for out of life and out of your friendship group. Um, it does deal with toxic friendships, which I think is something that is really important to look at for teens. So I'm gonna be getting my cousin a copy of this as well, because I know she'll adore it. And volume three comes out in February. So I'm gonna be getting that straight away. Finally made it to the end of the September books. So in September, I rated two books, two stars, eight books, three stars, three books, four stars, and five books, five stars. So I had a really good reading month. Now for October. In October, I read three books and I didn't finish three books. That makes six in total that I read some part of in October. Five of those were library books, so only one of them I owned myself. Shh, don't tell my partner, cause he'll lose his shit. The first of these I didn't finish was 10 minutes 38 seconds in This Strange World by Elif Shafak, which is about a sex worker called Tequila Leila in Istanbul who is found murdered in a dustbin. This works on the premise that after death, for the 10 minutes and 38 seconds following your death, the neurons in your brain are still firing. So each minute after death is another experience or memory or smell or taste that she remembers that Layla associates with a certain point in her life. I found it interesting but I did abandon it halfway through. There was a particularly traumatic scene which kind of disconnected me from the story. I found it quite triggering and it was really difficult to keep going so I thought I'm just gonna bail, I'm gonna leave it. It's winter, uni is crazy, I'm gonna leave it. The second book I didn't finish was Dark Lover by J.R. Ward which is the first in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. Um, this is a vampire series, vampire romance series, and everybody seems to love it, but I don't know, I found it interesting. It's a bit of a murder mystery in the beginning, but the dudes were just like overprotective, so I just didn't finish it. And then the third book that I DNF'd was The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is about Tiff and Leon who share a flat. In fact, they actually share a bed and they only communicate through notes. Leon is a hospice care nurse and Tiff works for a publisher. So they never actually meet in the book or they don't in the parts that I read. I really enjoyed Tiff's chapters. I really liked her as a character. I thought she was really warm and funny and she just had a bad lot in life. But Leon's chapters were really difficult to get into. I found it quite jarring and stilted and the conversation and the inner monologue was really difficult to follow. It was just too clinical for me. I didn't enjoy it, so I didn't finish it. One of the books that I did finish in October was Skim, which is written and illustrated by Mariko Tamaki and Gillian Tamaki. This is the story of a girl called Skim, who you can see on the front here, and she is a Wiccan goth who goes to a private girl's school. When someone in a neighbouring school kills himself, the school goes into mourning overdrive, which means that Skim is left wondering what is going on in her school, what's happening to her friendship group, and what does it mean to have mental health issues in the modern world. On paper, this is a story that I would have really enjoyed but I only gave it two stars. I didn't enjoy the art style. It's very blocked out and confusing and difficult to work out what's going on. The language was confusing. There's actually a trope in here, a romantic trope where a student gets together with a teacher, which just gives me the ick. And Skim and her best friend Lisa make horrible derogatory comments about mental health and that's never unpacked. Lisa never learns. Skim does start to look into her own behaviour and her own attitude towards mental health, but Lisa doesn't. And I think if you're gonna have a graphic novel aimed at teens about teen suicide, it's quite dangerous to have a character not address the issues that are clearly being raised. <sighs> we're almost there, we're almost there, we're on the home stretch. The second book I read was Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I gave this four stars. This is a story about a man named Jessen who's quite happy with his lot in life. He's a high school teacher and as he's walking home one night, someone abducts him, knocks him out and he wakes up in a world where he recognises nobody. He doesn't know where he is, but everyone knows him. And it's this excellent time travel, twisty, physics, science craziness and I couldn't get enough. The physics was accessible and not as intimidating as I thought it would be. And even though the middle dragged a little, 
overall Blake Crouch took the story in a really interesting direction. There were a couple of twists in there that I really didn't see coming which is difficult because I read so much but it was fantastic. I wouldn't read it again because it was very dark but overall I finished the book, I looked around and I'm like how can I carry on with my life knowing that I've read this book and everything that happens in that book has happened. It was just a bizarre experience and I really liked it. The final book I read in October was The Screaming Staircase which is the first book in the Lockwood and Company series by Jonathan Strout. This is kind of like if the Ghostbusters were teenagers and they were really bad at their jobs. I mean like burning down buildings by accident, bad at their jobs. This had major Haunting of Hill House vibes and I almost had to stop reading at night time because it gave me that much of the creeps. The inciting incident and the main plot did feel a bit disjointed. It was kind of like this is what's happened to get the story started and then we're just going to forget about it and move on to the main thing. They were actually connected in different ways but I think it could have been a lot smoother connection. But it was really funny. I love the characters. They're absolutely hilarious. I love the setting as well. It's set in London and it's kind of ye olde type times but it was fantastic. I've already read the second one and I've ordered the third one from the library so fantastic series. People have to read it. It's so funny. So there are all the books I read in September and October. Hopefully I can do a monthly wrap-up video because this was too much. I don't know about you but I'm exhausted. But let me know if you've read any of the books I've read. Let me know what you've been reading as well in the comments. Tell me, recommend me some books that I would like and I will see you in the next one.